Please be aware that I do not represent any company. I'm not endorsed by or affiliated with any automotive manufacturer or car dealership. All opinions expressed in this video are my own and all trademarks, logos and brand names are the property of their respective owners. Today, I'm going to show you how to complete a front brake job on this 2007 Lexus GX470. Open the hood and check the brake fluid level. Uh, this one is right kind of at the uh, middle line right here. If the fluid level is too high, when you compress the caliper pistons, it's going to overflow. So you'll need to evacuate some. Uh, you can use like a vacuum uh, suction tool or a turkey baster or something along those lines. Uh, in our case, because the level is uh, fairly low, we don't need to uh, remove any fluid before proceeding with a brake replacement. You can just loosen the cap uh, to make it easier to uh, compress the uh, caliper pistons. And uh, now we can uh, go ahead and lift the front of the vehicle up. So you'll need to uh, lift the front wheels of the ground to do the brake job. And uh, with this vehicle, you can lift it up uh, anywhere on the frame rail and make sure you secure it uh, with jack stands. Don't just uh, use a jack because they're not very reliable and uh, they can collapse and uh, hurt you very badly. Once the vehicle is lifted and secured, remove the front wheels using a 21 millimeter socket. Take a look at the brake caliper and you've got two clips that are preventing the pins from coming out. So you need to remove these clips and use needle nose pliers and uh, grab the little leg on it to push it away from the pin and then try to slide the pin out or the clip out. So there's one. Now it would be nice if I could turn this pin uh, sometimes they're pretty seized in there because I can't really get the clip out in this direction or maybe okay there we got it out that's good now what I like to do is uh, drive the pins out or at least this one so I can get this clip off of it and then I can get the pistons compressed back so I just use a punch and uh, Just note uh, the way that this um, uh, spreader spring goes and you can remove it from the caliper and set it aside. If it's damaged, replace it. If it's in good shape, you can reuse it. Now there are a few ways to uh, depress these caliper pistons back. If you don't have a proper tool, you can use a pry bar and you can install it right here in between the two pads and just uh, Try against it like this and keep going until uh, it compresses the pistons. Uh, the other way to do it is to take the caliper off and use a proper tool. So I'll show you how that's done as well. Let's get the second pin out of here. Sometimes these pins are seized very badly and um, they can get damaged while you're taking them out or sometimes they're stuck so badly you have to cut them out. Uh, in that case, if they're badly damaged uh, or you have to cut them, obviously you have to replace them. This one's a little bit mushroomed, but the hole is fine. It's intact, so you could clean these up and reuse them as well if you want to save a few bucks. Slide the pads out of the caliper. And just uh, note their orientation. The one on the inside has a slider, or sorry, a squealer tab right here, and the outside pad does not. 
Use some needle nose pliers to remove this clip here. Uh, you could also use a clip remover, but it uh, it has easy access from the back, so you can just use the pliers and squeeze the little tabs that hold it in place. This is the wire for the wheel speed sensor. And then uh, push it in there through the hole. There we go. Use a 10 millimeter socket to remove this uh, bolt right here. And then uh, use a 12 millimeter socket to remove this one. And now you can just uh, move this little bracket out of the way like this. Just disengage this metal hook out of the uh, steering uh, knuckle. Use a 17 millimeter socket to loosen and remove the two caliper bracket bolts. Now you can take the caliper off and uh, you can use a hook or a bungee strap to hang it off the uh, strut. Or you can uh, kind of rest it somewhere so it doesn't fall. You can put it up here for now. Uh, but uh, it's best to secure it because sometimes, you know, you can knock it off and it's going to pull on the hose and bend this line and that's not going to be fun. I'm going to throw a couple zip ties on it to hold it in place so we don't end up with a little unfortunate incident like this. Now you can use a tool like this to uh, spread the pistons out. Uh, check for links below the video. I've got all the tools and parts linked under there to uh, help you do this job easier. I just crank on it and uh, go until the pistons are fully depressed into the caliper. And that's it. It's done. And then check that the rubber um, dust boots are not rolled over. If they are, you'll need to uh, just manipulate them so that they're not stuck between the uh, edge of the piston and the pad. If it's, you know, overlapping, when you put the pads back in and you hit the brakes, it's going to rip a hole in this boot. So just make sure they're properly uh, sitting there properly and not hanging out. If they are hanging out, use a little screwdriver to uh, work them back in their proper position. This is a good time to uh, clean up the sliding surfaces where the pads sit in the caliper. I'll just use a metal wire brush and uh, work all four surfaces until they're nice and clean. important that when the pads are reinstalled they can slide easily in there because if there's a lot of rust and crust build up uh, the pads will get stuck and they won't uh, retract properly and that's going to cause them to wear faster so take your time and clean everything really well on most models toyota or lexus provides you with a little threaded hole to take the rotors off but on a gx for some reason they don't so um, you can take it off by hitting the rotor on the other side with a hammer uh, ours isn't stuck on, but if it were, uh, you could hit it from the back and uh, get it to come off. Just be careful if you're going to end up reusing the rotors and the machine in them. You don't want to put a big dent in them. You won't be able to uh, cut it off on a lathe. In our case, we can just uh, slide it right off. Now, take a little bit of time to clean the rust off the hub. Um, you know, uh, you don't want any big chunks stuck on there because it's gonna make our new rotor sit not flush and it can potentially cause a vibration. So go in with a brush and just clean or scrape off any uh, rust and dirt that's built up on there. And that will make sure that uh, your brake job is done 100% properly and you don't end up having to take it off. And Reclean it again. Okay, 
Okay, let's install our new uh, Lexus or Toyota rotor. So people often ask me about using aftermarket parts on the uh, uh, brake components. So I use aftermarket parts, let's say for things like uh, suspension lifts or superchargers or whatnot. But uh, when it comes to brakes, I only use Toyota stuff. In my experience, it's not much more expensive. It lasts longer. It's way better as far as noise or vibration, so I don't uh, cheap out on brake components. Uh, it's Toyota for me every time. Now we can uh, reinstall our caliper back on. Make sure that the hose is twisted. And that torque to 91 foot pounds. And now uh, line up this bracket and uh, reinstall the 12 mil head bolt. And then the 10 mil. Uh, torque spec on this one is 21 foot pounds. And then the little guy, it's about five or seven, just snug it up by hand. That's good enough. And now reinstall the clip for the uh, wheel speed sensor harness right here until it's securely engaged. Okay, so uh, grab your old pads. I'm going to replace the shims. Uh, if yours are in good condition, you don't have to. Uh, the outer pads are symmetrical side to side, but the inner pads aren't. The squealer is located in a different spot. So just compare it to the one that you took out and make sure it's the same. So this will be our inner pad. This will be our outer pad. Um, in the shim kit, there comes a little bag of uh, lubricant here. Uh, I prefer using this Toyota uh, brake caliper grease myself. In my experience, it's really good that... Uh, helping with reducing brake noise and those kind of problems. So I just put a little dab on the shims right here and then put another three small dabs right here and then put the uh, outer shim on and then do the same thing on this side. Like that. like that okay and then you can use a little bit of anti-seize or uh, brake lubricant just on the edges here don't get it on the pads uh, this will uh, just help the pads from getting stuck in the caliper and slide a little bit better and uh, now we can reinstall them now grab the pads and slide them in. So the one with the uh, squealer goes on the inside. And make sure they fit in there nicely. If you have to force them, you didn't clean it well enough. See how nice it slides. And remember to check the links below the video. That's where you can find the replacement parts and tools and materials that I use. If you're reusing the pins, uh, clean them up nicely. If you're putting new ones in, don't worry about it. You can use either sandpaper or a, a wire brush or a, you know a wire wheel or whatever you got handy. You just want to get like the big heavy surface rust off of it until it's uh, back to its original shape. Um, if uh, if the end of the pin mushroomed a bit while you were pounding it out, just uh, sand it down and grind it down a little bit. And the end result should be two pins that can uh, slide easily into these holes and don't need to be pounded out of there next time. Reinstall the spring right here. It goes like this. Now, uh, I like to apply a little bit of uh, 
anti-seize or a brake protection paste. And now you just want to line up the pin with the holes. And there you go. Look how nice it slides in. So let's do the same with this one and uh, get this guy in place. Okay, great. And now you can uh, reinstall these little clips. Uh, if they're rusted or damaged, replace them. Otherwise, just uh, reinstall them back in until they engage with a pin and they can't come off. That's good. Now you can remove this uh, lug nut that we installed to temporarily hold the rotor in place and uh, put the wheel back on the vehicle. Snug the lug nuts up in a crisscross direction. And um, go ahead and do the brake job on the other side. After you finish uh, replacing the brake components on the other side, uh, lower the vehicle and uh, tighten the wheels to 83 foot-pounds. Now you can get in the vehicle and uh, pump the brakes a few times just to pick up the clearance uh, between the uh, uh, pads and the rotors and check the brake fluid level. Ours is right at max, so that's great. If it's like really high and wants to spill over, you'll need to extract some of there, uh, but ours is great. So there you go. Front uh, brake pad and rotor replacement is completed. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more Lexus GX470 maintenance and repair videos. See you next time. Cheers.